Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's the latest of our video calls. We are catching up with everybody while we're all still kind of at home at the minute. And I'm delighted to say from the plot in you, we've got Landon on the line. How are you, man? I'm very good. Just been chilling, drinking a bunch of coffee. That's the, out. That's the way to be yeah. at home these days, man. That's the way to be. Uh, I've started all these off in kind of a similar way, which is just to say, you know, I hope you, your loved ones, bandmates, all kind of keep it safe, keep it well where you are. Um, and just yeah. generally, before we kind of get onto the record and all that kind of stuff, how you been kind of finding this extended time at home? I think there's been a familiar theme with all of these. Everyone's saying, yeah, it's nice to have some time at home, but God, it's weird. I mean, everyone's yeah. so used to being out on the road, right? Right. No, I mean, for me, <laughs> I think I've enjoyed it more than most. I, uh, I don't know. I, before COVID we were so like, just go, go, go like touring so much. And just like, I had to, I had to have the record done in like a month and I only had like half of it done. So I felt all this pressure to like get that done and stuff. So for me, it was a blessing. <laughs> I thoroughly loved all of the lockdown. It was incredible. Me and my wife just hung out, caught up, watched movies, bought a house hung out we bought like a little lake house and got a boat so we just like honestly dude it was like a dream <laughs> really i live in the dream life there my no. god just chilling on a boat yeah, no, for a was, few months it was very very sick um i'm glad everything's like kind of slowly coming back to normal though like it's nice to reconnect with friends and family and stuff like that but i think for me i think it kind of uh it gave me just like a fresh perspective and a time to like really uh process a lot of things that I uh, probably suppressed for a long time because just had constant dopamine throw, thrown at me all day, every day, being on tour and, you know, just doing the kind of living the kind of lifestyle I, I did. So it was nice. It was very good. Yeah. Nice to have some time for reflection. Absolutely. And uh, it's nice yeah. to see you guys, you know, you've, you've been productive as ever. This is good. The record is kind of imminent at the time of recording here. And, yeah. you know, I guess I guess that's a place I've started again with a lot of artists who've ha- got new music out and new music to promote. How much of this was actually kind of a lockdown project even if it's not a lockdown album in that kind of sense you know how much of this was actually written during this downtime or did you have ideas kind of already ready to go before all this i had probably four or five songs that ended up making it to the record before the lockdown and then um yeah when the lockdown happened it was just like i took probably maybe a month or two away from writing because i i had a studio that um I had just signed a lease for and luckily the landlord let me out of that lease like when COVID happened because I lost all of my work almost overnight so then that kind of I had to like move my studio back to my apartment and then almost like two months later after moving back to my apartment we decided to buy a house so it was just all this like craziness you know moving around like setting up a new home studio all this crazy stuff so yeah I had a lot of uh a lot of time to just take a break from the record and not even think about it. So whenever I did come back to it, it was like a totally new environment, like fresh perspective. So yeah, it was cool. I get, I got to really just like take my time and just work on it when I felt like working on it, as opposed to like having a deadline. It was just kind of like, yeah, whenever you're done with it, I guess turn it in and we'll, <laughs> you know what I mean? But we kind of, we pretty early on uh, made a pact that we wouldn't put the record out during the lockdown so yeah it was just like i mean every month it was just like a question like when when is when are things going to go back to normal when when will this record be able to come out so i just kept like i said i took my time with it and just did it when i felt like doing it so it was nice i loved it (laughs) yeah not alone in asking those questions though i'm sure i think that's been a very common theme everybody asking those questions Uh, i can't help but notice some sort of sound dampening stuff attached to what are we in the little studio now is this the new home studio set up right here Yep, this is it. Just chilling in here. Wow. Yep. Lovely yeah. thing to have there. Lovely thing to have for a working process, particularly in this year. Um, yeah. Well, let's, I mean, let's get into the record a little bit. I, I know it's a stereotypical question, but I genuinely am fascinated by album titles every single time. Honestly, I think it's just so interesting to see why people pick these sorts of phrases to sum up a record, even if it's from a lyric, even from it's from a song title. I just always find that really, really interesting. And this again, yeah. here we are, Swan Song. It's, it's a mm-hmm. big old statement. Everyone's got a lot of attachment to those statements. It sort of implies we're at the beginning of an end, which I hope is not the case here. Talk to me why that, uh, why that was the choice here um yeah i i think um when the record comes out and people really like dive deep into it i think the the theme will make itself a little bit more apparent um because it's like 
it's like a saying goodbye to like mentalities and like uh even like persona whether that was intentional or not you know like i think it's just like a a big conclusion to a lot of a lot of things especially like pertaining to plot and like the themes that i've that i've talked about throughout my art throughout the past like 10 years so yeah i don't want to give like too much away because i really think that's like it it plays a lot into like obviously the theme of the record that's what it's called but i think i think once people listen to it and have a good good deep dive into it it'll make itself a little bit more apparent like why that was the choice so yeah not to yeah. give an anti-climactic answer, but... <laughs> <laughs> Teasing. We call that a teaser. That's what yeah. we call that. Although I suppose right. we should say, I mean, I mean, there are a couple of quotes from you that have been doing the rounds when these singles have kind of come out, and you have been touching on the fact that while it's not necessarily a bigger, grander ending, there it is very much that has been a theme in, in the things you've been thinking through in the lyrics. I, I believe there's quotes about, you know, end of things, end of friendships, end of relationships, end of people's lives. And again, I, I imagine thinking about those wider themes... Um, even if this wasn't a record written specifically about the situation we've all found ourselves in in the last 18 months, they can't help but resonate even more now, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I mean, the whole record, it's pretty somber. You know, it's, there's not a whole lot of hope. There's not a whole lot of positivity in it. And um, I think that in my mind, it was kind of just like, I kind of wanted to say, make peace with a lot of those subjects and like a lot of the stuff because i mean especially if you listen to like like happiness and self-destruction dispose and stuff like that it's all just like reflecting on extremely negative things and stuff and like i guess at this point in my life i'm trying to move further and further away from negative things in life and trying to like have a more positive outlook and stuff so it was almost just kind of like flushing out all of this shit that I've been dwelling on for so long and uh COVID gave me kind of the opportunity to do that you know to really be introspective and progressive in my my way of thinking and processing things so again I think it's something when you listen to the record and really like dive deep into it I think a lot of these themes will kind of explain it you know a little bit deeper so yeah yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't want to spoil it for the listener too much. I understand that. Yeah. But I guess, I mean, something that maybe a few people will latch onto, or certainly something that kind of struck to mind uh, when I was knew I was going to be chatting to you like this, is that uh, we can talk about endings and we can talk about end of eras and we can talk about all that kind of thing. And it, it, I just found it really interesting. There's a record called Swan Song that's talking a lot about the ending of things. Uh, mm. When we are now, correct me if I'm wrong, it's got to be the 10 year mark now since the debut album came out, right? I mean, I think it's probably. Yeah, I think this year. Yeah, I think uh, I think our first record was 2011, and then I, I, but we had an EP before that. So all in all, we've been a band for 11 ish years. 11 ish. Last last year doesn't count as timing wise. We always knock that one up. But yeah, (laughs) I mean, 11 11 years as a band, and then 10 years since the kind of debut record. Did you find yourself? I mean, clearly you're in a reflective mood with this, but did that affect it in any way? Kind of looking back on on taking stock, I guess, on what you guys have achieved at this point. Yeah, maybe like subconsciously. I mean, it's definitely like weird to look at posters in my room of tours that happened a decade ago, you know, like, I mean, I have one I can look at right now. It's from 2008 in an old band. And it's like, fuck, I've really been doing this for almost half my life. Like, that's pretty bizarre. But I mean, I was talking to somebody earlier today about this. Um, It's just weird to, uh, yeah, again, like think we've been doing it that long. And another thing is like, touring like living in that lifestyle like really enables you to really suppress a lot of things because like I said a few minutes ago like it's like constant dopamine thrown at you all the time and just you know you're around people socializing and like in social situations all the time so it's like it's a lot of just like numbing it's a lot of like you don't really have to think about real life or process it's like a true escape from real life and doing that for so, so many years and not really having a whole lot of time, even in between tours, I was working like crazy. So it's like, I feel like I just never had like a really nice break to, to just sit and like collect my thoughts and <laughs> like, you know, reflect on things. So, yeah, I mean, it was just such a beautiful opportunity to do that. And, uh, but yeah, back to your question, I, your statement, like, it's just, it's weird. It's very weird to look back on how long this has been going on and, how long the band's been able to do it like i'm grateful for it but at the same time it's like i'm very glad that we got to like take a step back and just relax for a minute (laughs) 
you know. Yeah, no, of course you have to take those yeah. moments, don't you? Because that's how you kind of yeah. get to build for the future in a bigger way. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to mention, you know, in terms of the singles, uh, you know, I said earlier about how you know it's a stereotypical question, but on the album title stuff, the other thing I do always like to ask people because again, I just think it's really interesting how these choices are made. But um, when you give your fans the first taster of that new era, that new material. A Facebook mm-hmm. was obviously the first thing we got to hear from this. Why that song? Why did you think that that was the one that you thought would kick off this era and actually uh, let the people know what might be coming next? To be honest, I think the the main like driving factor and like the choice to put that one out first was because I was like, what's the one that's just going to weird people out the most? You know what I mean? And like, I mean, it's a full album of like pretty weird songs in general, but that one was like, to me... I could still listen to that song every time and be like, I don't even know what this is. Like, it's not really a rock song. It's not like, it's so just like in the middle of so many different things. And it was just kind of like, why not? Like, let's, let's freak people out a little bit. (laughs) Cause if any song on the record is going to do that, it's going to be this one. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I like the chorus a lot and stuff. I think the the theme behind it really um, encompasses a lot of like, what's to come on the record you know thematically it's it's a little bit of like everything um it touches like very briefly on almost every topic on the record all in one song so it's like yeah i guess this makes the most sense but i don't know if it was the right choice or not i don't care it just (laughs) but yeah i i was it was very interesting watching people react because i saw so many comments of people just like I don't know if I like this. I don't know. <laughs> like, it was just like, yeah, I feel like it freaked people out. And that was kind of the intention. Nothing yeah. wrong with freaking people out now and then. Yeah. Got to keep them on their toes. I like that. <laughs> Good, yeah. uh, I want to mention the production side as well. You're working with Drew on this one. And, uh, and you know, people will know his work from, I mean, I mean, so many eyes we cover in Roxanne with us, you know, Motionless and White, Ice Nine Kills. Yeah. I mean, he did the IDK stuff fairly recently as well. Um, talk to me about that working relationship and, uh, and how it was working on this one. Yeah, so um, that's actually a, a big um, misunderstanding, which is totally fine. I, I feel like it was probably, if anything, our fault for not um, explaining how it worked. But like, so basically I did half the record and then like on my own. And then we just went to him for one week and then he. Oh, I see. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we went to him for one week and he just kind of like added his spin to a couple songs um so he i think he was involved with like five of the songs that are on the record so he just kind of like added like production elements and stuff to a couple things i think he even like adjusted the tempo to a couple things and just helped with just like some minor stuff it was more just like we wanted to bring him songs and be like okay what can you do to make these even cooler you know what i mean so yeah we came back from the studio with him um and i think maybe it was like six months later then i kind of like wrote the last like three or four songs of the record so he yeah he was involved in about half of it and we kept some of the stuff that he added and took away some of it because we had way too much time to like sit with these songs and like think about them from as many different perspectives as possible so he was a lot less involved on this record than he was uh the previous one but he still did like the songs that he helped out on like he really he really helped make those songs like elevate you know like uh, he helped with face me that was like the biggest one he helped with and then like the very first song on the record those two were probably the ones he was most involved with but i love working with true he's he's incredibly talented him and i are very like-minded in a lot of ways we like approach things very similarly we like you know we're very interested in the uh the the philosophy behind like like songwriting and stuff like that so him and i always just have really great discussions and like we just build off each other really well so it's always always an honor working with him he's the man yeah it's really interesting as well because i know you've done obviously you've done a lot of solo production on your records you've done a lot of co-production stuff as well uh i guess maybe it was is this the first time in a minute where I mean, effectively, a lot of that record you're back producing on your own then, I guess, this time. And I mean, that must be the first time in a couple of years, at least, when it's been not just a co-production thing, but no, you're actually taking control of, by the sounds of it, the majority of this record again. Yeah. Um, so the the first two records that we did, I did, like, everything from, like, start to finish. And then Happiness and Self-Destruction was the first one that, um, that we had another producer just um, come in and Um, finish off basically he just like mixed and mastered all of it and stuff so that was like a really unique experience but yeah like 
coming back and like putting all of that weight back on myself was honestly like, I think it was something I needed. I needed like a real responsibility in my life because during COVID, you know, there wasn't a whole lot to do. So I was like, okay, this is something that I can use as like a learning experience because obviously I, I produce for a living in between doing plot stuff anyway. So I was like, this would really give me a huge responsibility and like kind of force me to learn a lot of things. Cause obviously I'm like, if I'm mixing it, if I'm like taking care of all the production elements, then that means that like all of that weight is on me and it's going to force me to really do my absolute best and go above and beyond. And it really, it really did. Like I'm still reaping the benefits of like really taking that, that challenge on and yeah, just delving into it like face first and putting all that weight on myself. So I'm, I'm very thankful for it. It was such a good growing and learning experience. So yeah, yeah. I think moving forward in the future, I'll probably just keep doing it myself because yeah. every time I just feel like I learned so much more, you know? Yeah, it's funny. What what had changed for you? I mean, obviously, yeah, like you say, you've worked on production with other people as well. But yeah, you did do a lot of solo production of the band in the early days. And then you've been working with other people. Like what had changed now when you came back to producing your own work again like this? Was it what had you learned in the interim, I suppose, that kind of made things a bit easier? Well, I mean, I picked up a lot from Drew, honestly, like doing Dispose with Drew. Um, again, like him and I are just so like we think about things so similar his approach to things like production elements and stuff was just a lot different than mine like he focuses so much on jail and like transitions and stuff like that and like really just like the way that it's going to impact the listener where I always just cared about how it impacted me and as long as I was happy with it so I guess it just made me a little bit more aware of like how the songs are going to affect the average listener and you know what I mean so I just like, I think I dissected the songs more than I ever had before and uh, just really paid attention to detail, I, I suppose. So yeah, it was, it was cool. Like, I, I think, again, I think I just, I needed that in my life. I needed like a real, a real challenge and a real hurdle to, to, to jump over, you know? So it was awesome. Yeah, no, it's really cool to see you do that, man. And I guess the next challenge, I don't know if we could call it a challenge or not, but it will certainly, I imagine, take a minute to blow the cobwebs away because we've got live shows coming, man. They're coming back. Yeah. Live music is touch wood and all that, making its full kind of return. Um, heading out with Silverstein, which has got to be really, really fun, exciting. I mean, obviously a big, big tour for them, big anniversary tour for them as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you must be excited to finally be able to get out there and play these songs you've lived with for a minute in front of the people again. Yeah, it's going to be weird. I, I don't know if I even know how to sing anymore. It's been, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't stood in front of a microphone in a couple months. So that's going to be weird for sure. But yeah, I'm excited. I actually toured with Silverstein once. It was like 11 or 12 years ago in my old band. Um, and uh, I honestly didn't, I don't think I even met any of them the last time I toured with them, <laughs> which was weird. I, I've met Shane since like I did his podcast and stuff, but yeah, I've only heard good things. They're apparently really sweet guys, so it'll be cool. Yeah, it should be really, really exciting, man. Well, I'll let you go, man. Uh, congrats again on the record. Good luck with those live Thanks. shows. And we, of course, look forward to seeing you over here in the UK whenever that may be. I hope it's going to be sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, take care of yourself in the meantime, man. All the best to you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Good to see you. All right, man.